Hey, it's Doran from cgbookcase.com and today I'm going to show you how to create 3D calligraphy in Blender. So first we're going to write a text on paper and then take a photo of it. If you want to, you can also use the photo I made. There's a download link beneath the video. Then we're going to open Blender, press N to open the properties region and add the photo we took before as a background image. Now if we go into orthographic view by pressing 5 and into front view by pressing 1 on the numpad, you can see the background image. So next we're gonna press shift A, add a Bezier curve and rotate it by 90 degrees on the x-axis. To modify the curve we switch to the edit mode, just like you do with a normal mesh. One segment is the thing between the two group of points. The point in the middle of a group of points is called a control point, because with it you can control where a segment starts or ends. If you move, rotate or scale the control point, the whole group of points will change. The other two points are called the handles. By adjusting their position, you can adjust the curvature of the segment. To extrude the curve and add a new segment, we can hit E. Now we're gonna try to redraw the text in 3D with the techniques I just showed you. I recommend spending quite a bit of time at this step until the text looks good and has this kind of flow. Now, when we free drawn the entire curve, we want to add some thickness to it. And we can do this by pressing Shift A and adding a Bezier circle. Next, we can select the text with the right mouse button, go to the data tab of the properties editor and then choose the Bezier curve as the bevel object of the text. Depending on the size of your text in relation to the Bezier circle, the text may be a bit too thick now. However, we can easily adjust this by lowering the scale of the Bezier circle. So next, we're gonna select our text again and go back to edit mode. Then, we're gonna select the first and the last control point of the curve and decrease the radius of them in the properties region, which you can access by pressing N. Now we're done with the modeling part, so we're gonna add a camera and place it so it shows our text. You can enter camera view by pressing O on the numpad and you can navigate through the camera by pressing Shift F and then using the WASD keys. Then we're gonna adjust the dimensions to roughly fit the text. Next we can split the 3D window and switch to render view in the upper one so we can actually see how it will look when rendered. Then, if you haven't done it already, we go to the Scene tab and set the view to Filmic instead of Default, so we have more control over our highlights. If you don't know what a Filmic View Transform is, you can download a free guide called the 3D Artist Guide to Creating Photorealistic Renders in Blender below this video, where I covered that topic a bit more in depth. Next, we want to have some light in our scene, so we go to the World tab and add an HGRI. An HGRI basically is a high dynamic range, 360 degree image, which lights our scene and gives realistic reflections. You can download this exact same HGRI on hgriheaven.com for free as well. Then, if we go to the material tab, we can add a new material to the text. I want the text to look metallic, so I'm going to choose the principled shader from the list with a nice orangey color 
set it to metallic and increased roughness to about 0.3. Then to add some rim light from behind, which separates the text a bit more from the background, we can add an area lamp and place it behind the text. Then we're gonna scale the lamp so the rim light gets a bit more prominent. The default strength of 100 works fine for me in this case. Next we're gonna duplicate the area lamp by pressing shift D and place it so it lights the text from the front. Then we're gonna scale the lamp a bit down on the global C axis so the reflection of it in the golden material gets a bit thinner. I'm also gonna increase the strength of the lamp so the reflection gets brighter. Now we are almost done with the 3D part of this tutorial, the last thing we need to do is to make it ready for rendering. Since we want to add a background image to this later, we're gonna set the background to transparent. To make it noise free, we can increase the render samples to about 300 and activate the noising in the render layers tab. Then we're gonna hit F12 and wait till it's rendered. Once it has finished rendering, we're gonna press F3 and save it as a PNG. Then we're gonna import it into an image editing software. I'm using Affinity Photo, but you can use any software you want. So we're gonna import our render and then add a new layer beneath the text and fill it with a nice violet color. To add some interest to the background, we're gonna download the grunge wall one texture from cgbookcase.com and add the color map on top of the violet layer. Next, we're gonna set the blend mode of the texture to overlay so we can still see the violet background color and decrease the visibility of the texture so the effect is more subtle. Then we're gonna rescale the texture, move it to the corner of the image and duplicate and replace it a bunch of times until we have these dark stripes, I don't know how to call them, on every side of the image. Next, we can adjust the levels of the text a bit to make it brighter and add a shadow behind it so it better integrates with the background and looks more realistic. Lastly, we're gonna export it as JPEG, maybe share it on Twitter to get a few likes. So thanks for watching, I really hope you've learned something today. There's also a text version of this tutorial on cgbookcase.com if you wanna check it out. Like this video if you like it and if you don't want to miss a video, make sure you're subscribed to this channel.